So no book work this week. We are going to be working on a project that is all you. You can be as creative as you want. So this time we are going to be creating a poster in Illustrator for the Anderson International Art Festival. Now, this isn't real. I made it up. Uh, the poster should be 11 by 17 with a um, 0.25 bleed. We'll talk about that in a second. And it should be all vectors. So we're not going to have any pictures, anything off Photoshop. It's all going to be in vectors created in Illustrator. You need to use only Adobe fonts, and I do explain that in a separate video. Um, you can't use Mirrored Pro because that is the default. And, you know, this is an art class, so we don't want to use just what the default. So it should communicate that it, the festival is about lots of kinds of art, music, dancing, fine arts. Also, it's international. So um, think about that it would be printed. So this needs to be in CMYK, 300 DPI. Posters should include this information. Now realize that clients often give you stuff that you do not need to write. So it doesn't have to be a pro precise replication of this. You should change it. For instance, you don't need to write event date. So don't just take this and copy it in there. That doesn't make any sense to write event date. I think we know. You also probably don't want to write it just like that because that is ugly. Um, we don't need to write start set. Uh, we don't need to write calling in front of a telephone number. Everybody knows what a telephone number does. So think about what you're typing down. Oftentimes clients will just send you an email, but they won't really, you know, they'll say it in a way that is not necessarily artistic. So yes, all actors, um, all graphics must be turned into vectors. Um, there is another video on how to image trace if you would like to use that. Please push yourself and try and make Illustrator do everything that you can. Um, we are going to export it as a PDF for high quality printing. And we're going to also export it as a 300 DPI JPEG. And I'll show you how to do that. And we need to attach two files and submit. Now, I have put some design inspiration on here. And uh, take a minute to look at that because students often think that the words that you put on the screen are just information. They're not. They are the art. Most of these um, posters were created just using typography. So you can see that this, this, instead of just typing it on there, they really made this interesting. So think about your font and how you put your font on the screen is actually more, is, is, is the part of the design, not just like, you know, a piece of clip art is the design and then you just type the date. No, <laughs> this is where you can really get fun with that. Now, I made a separate video on Adobe fonts and how you can take fonts and turn them into outlines and do interesting things with them. So please take a minute to look at that. Um, and then let's kind of get started on designing us a poster. So if you didn't look at the last video that was about making uh, d different choices with your fonts and how to load different fonts onto your computer, please take a look at that. We made this together. And then I just wanted to show you kind of an example of my thought processes when I made an example for this assignment. So I'm not telling you to do exactly what I did. I just wanted to show you my thought process. So first, let's talk about Bleed. Um, I'm going to set up a new, new project for you, but right here we have... Um, Right, right here we have an 11 by 17 artboard. And you can see that red line on the outside. That is the bleed line. So if we wanted something like say a background like this, we want it to print out to the edge of the paper. The edge of the paper is actually where the black line is. If you wanted it to go all the way out to the end, you actually have to extend it farther so that the printer can actually chop it off right here. If not, you're going to get weird little white lines and stuff around it. So full bleed means that it bleeds off the side of the page. If you have anything that goes to the very end of this black line, you have to actually extend it out to the bleed line. And I will check on that when I look at your assignment. So. Uh, make sure that you understand what bleed is to be a good graphic designer. So if we were going to make this, I'm just going to go to File, New. And if you go to Print, you will see it has a bunch of different um, print presets. If we go to the presets, it's actually the one called Tabloid is the one we want. So you could click on that. And if you say inches, you will see that that's actually 11 by 17. If you can't find this one called um, tabloid, then literally just type in 11 by 17 inches and you will have the correct size. So I just pulled this out a little bit bigger so you could see it. 
Um, all printers are going to be different, but our print specification says a 0.25 bleed. So these are all locked together. So we can just type in 0.25 and it will put it on all of the edges. That's going to give us that little red around the edge that we know we need to extend to. Of course, it's in CMYK and 300 PPI. So just say create and you will have uh, what I got started with. You can see there's the bleed line. So now let me go back to my example. So this is just kind of my thought process. So I went online and got myself a picture of um, some ballet slippers and I image traced them. That's in the other video. So I said, okay, that's cool. I just want to start with some dancing stuff. And then I made a copy of that and I brought down the opacity. So if I click on this layer, you can see up here, I just brought down the opacity. I just thought that looked kind of cool. Now, you notice that these do go all the way out to the bleed line. Actually, that one needs to go up just a tad more to be in the bleed, doesn't it? I'm just going to pull that up just a little bit. There we go. Now it's in bleed. Actually, this one is a tad out of bleed, too. There we go. So they have to be all the way out to there. This one might cause a problem because it's so close to the edge. Now, if you don't want it to be in bleed, we would need to... Do, we could do something like this. Now, nothing is going to the edge, so it doesn't matter. But if I want that to go all the way to the edge of the paper, I must extend it out to bleed. So let me undo that a couple times here. All right, so now I had that. Then I had already created this that we did in the other video that was kind of like a little group. So I grabbed all these and I grouped them together. So I said object group. And then I just said control C for copy and I pasted them over here. So we had the Anderson area arts festival. Oh, that's a little too high, isn't it? So I decided to move it down a little bit and I thought I would try a different color. Okay. Okay. We're getting somewhere. But then I was like, you know, I don't really like that. Let me, let me try something different. I was driving down the highway and I saw they were having a Salvador Dali. Um, exhibit in Atlanta. So I kept driving past that. So I went and got a picture of Salvador Dali and I image traced him. And then I decided, oh, he's really famous for his mustache. So I went and got my direct selection tool, right? Because direct selection tool will just grab one or two points. And I got these very end points and I decided I'm going to make his mustache really long. I don't know. I was just being artsy. And then I got my Anderson Arts Festival thing. And I said, that's cool, but I want to take that whole thing and I want to twist it. So I grabbed the whole thing and I went to that transform that we used and I rotated it. So then it looked like that. Okay, but let me move it up a little bit higher maybe. Let's see. Maybe up there like that. Okay, so do you see my thought process of how you can really just start taking images and moving things around? Then I thought, you know, I want something else on there. So I went on the internet and I typed in grunge background. And I got a photo and it I'm um, vectorized it because, you know, it says it has to be all vectorized. So I turned this into vectors. If we go look at it, let me click on it. You can see that each individual thing was turned into a vector. Remember when Remember, when you use image trace, you have to say expand all when you're done, and then you will see all of these little different things. So I thought that looked kind of cool. And I was just, you know, trying things. Then I turned back on Salvador Dali. Oh, I don't know. Let's see, can we see him? I'm not sure. It's kind of cool. It's just looking like... Anyway, this is just kind of giving you an idea of my thought process. I'm not telling you to copy me in any way. I just thought that might help you kind of think about it. Let's look, look at some examples of past student work. So this student kind of made a collage uh, um, idea. That one's more simple, but um, let's zoom in just a tad. I like the idea, almost like icons. You can see that he really pushed the idea of the font being part of the design here. This one's very simple, but I do like how he added this um, down in here. You can see he image traced that. That is beautiful, all vectorized. And this one's interesting. If you zoom in on it, you can see that these are all separate vectors that they've uh, used image trace. But when you're looking at it from far away, uh, it does, it looks very photorealistic, but that is all vectors. 
simple but effective. Now notice this student didn't listen to me uh, and they typed it like that. And the, do we need the word starts? No. Do we need for more information? No, we don't need or call. So please think about that. It makes your design so much better. Oh, I wanted to add this one in because um, this was, I was teaching the, in, in person and this student liked to draw on paper. And when I showed her how to image trace, she went and image traced all of her drawings that were on paper. So this, and I think this um, flower was something that she had drawn on paper and then scanned it in and image traced it. So um, I, I always keep that one as an example. This one doesn't have any type of art except for the font. And I think it's very, very, um, I think it's nice. This student, um, she went on to a four-year college. Um, she drew all of this in, in Illustrator. She uh, hates clip art, so she made all of that herself, um, each of these drawings. You can tell with her little tree, she used to make fun of her trees. <laughs> but she made that um, guitar and all that. She was very, very good um, at this in this class. And, and she's a very, very good artist, and I appreciate her work. And I like to show this one because um, this student was very much into anime and asked, can I put anime in this? And I said, You're, you surely can. That's kind of art. You can you can put your anime in there. And here's another student that was into this type of look. Um, absolutely. You can give us your personality. That's absolutely fine. OK, so I hope that gave you some good ideas. So I hope that gave you some good ideas. Um, you can use whatever colors you want. Um, make sure your fonts are Adobe. So let's talk about how to export it. When you are done, you're going to say File, Save As. We're going to choose Adobe PDF. Say Save. And when it comes up right here, you're going to say High Quality Print. All of this is fine. And you're going to click Save as PDF. When you export as a JPEG, you need to say File, Export, Export As. You're going to choose JPEG. But right here, leave it in CMYK. Make sure on resolution that you say 300 PPI. If you save it as 72, it's going to come up really small on my screen. So make sure you click 300 PPI. All right, let me know if you need any help. Good luck, and let's see how creative you can get.